Hi, my name is Joseph Benedict. I'm a practicing emergency physician in Massachusetts, and this video is about respirators. So we're in the middle of a COVID-19 pandemic, and we're at critical shortages across the country and in my hospitals and every hospital for personal protective equipment. So a lot of people are turning to commercially available devices to figure out uh, how to protect themselves while on shift. I've been getting a lot of questions about what I've purchased and what my setup is, so I'm just taking this opportunity to make a video, explain it all once for all, so I can share it, because if my friends and coworkers and people that I, uh, are also on the front line are having these questions locally, I know they are probably everywhere. So um, these opinions are my own, and they're based on my own research of what's available and my experience with uh, respirators in the past, and I used to be a house painter. so. Uh, they don't uh, represent any of my employers and yada 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 so anyways what i have uh, is the first mask that i purchased this is a m3 680 series it's a pretty versatile and pretty common uh, mask i did a full face shield because i don't want to touch my eyes on shift um, if you do a full or half and goggles it's, of course that's fine but we know from the who that we need to protect our eyes and our mouths and our nose um, from getting COVID. So the main questions that I've gotten are about the cartridges and the filters. So this is a commercially available device that I got at a paint store and it comes with a cartridge, which is for vapors, organic vapors. It's filled with carbon. You don't need this um, to protect your yourself against COVID. Um, what you really need is the filters that attach to the outside. So this is just a little casing with two P95 filters. Uh, am I holding the right way? No, upside down, there you go, P95 filters. So they slap together, go on to here, attach to the cartridge, and then screw on to the bayonet lock, which is that quick lock mechanism that they designed here. So you don't really need the cartridge, like I was saying, because we're not dealing with vapors here. You do need the filters, and you need it to be a 95 rating or better. There's a link in the notes below um, explaining from the OSHA, or I'm sorry, the NIOSH site about what 95, 100, P, N all mean, but basically you need a 95 or better, um, and that's kind of the standard right now. If you want to skip these cartridges, which you know, kind of restrict your breathing and you don't really need them for protecting against COVID specifically, uh, you can, you can buy something like this that I found on Amazon. You only really need the filtering process to protect against COVID, so the cartridges are superfluous. So if you end up going that way, that's fine. Alternatively, um, M3 does manufacture um, a PAPR type setup that it has a battery that connects to a, a fan that filters incoming air and also uh, filters outgoing air that attaches to the front of the 680 series mask. Okay, let's talk about putting on and taking off or donning and doffing the uh, standard full face mask. Um, I've experimented this at home a bit and this is what I think is the safest way. So putting it on, no big deal because it's clean. You wanna put it on first, just like all, all your other face equipment. And I tighten the straps as much as possible on the top. And then tighten them behind like this. Now, once you're sure you got a good face seal, the idea is to keep this on um, for a long period of time. And this will prevent you from auto inoculating yourself by touching your eyes or your mouth or your face using other equipment. The real trick is taking this off. So once you've doffed all your other PPE, this is the last thing to go. And my technique is to wash my hands, put on a new pair of gloves, grab the respirator by the cartridges, rip behind here with my fingers and lift the tabs, then pull the mask away from my face and lift it up and over. I think that's the safest way. So the trick is how do you clean these? Um, these aren't supposed to be reused very much, right? So you're, you can reuse these vapor cartridges for up to 30 days and basically the manufacturer says when you start to have difficulty and resistance breathing in that you should replace these. Well, first of all, we don't even need these vapor ones. And second of all, um, we're most concerned about contamination on the outside. 
So uh, you can't soak these because it's going to ruin the carbon and make it uh, even harder to breathe in through these. You can autoclave these, I think, and I would recommend, you know, like 140 degrees for two hours uh, as, you know, the upper limit of what I think is safe and reasonable because based on what I've looked at, uh, the, the coronaviruses they've studied in the past die off at 130 degrees. So, and if someone has a smarter idea about uh, autoclaving these, please let me know. Uh, these also, I'm gonna autoclave and reuse them because I, we are on short supply everywhere in the country. And then the plastic parts here, all the plastic parts, you just soak it in bleach, all right? And you want that to be at the right concentration, so just look at the NIOSH uh, website that I'll put a link below. A lot of people will be getting the three quarter, the half mask, and that's fine, uh, just as long as you have good eye protection as well and you aren't fiddling with your eyes and auto inoculating yourself. And if there's any other questions about how I'm doing my setup and keeping myself safe, um, let me know. Happy to answer them. Thanks.